What's up, what's up, what's up, good people? Welcome once again to the Open Bar Sports Talk Edition. As always, I am your boy, the connoisseur of Big U. And you know what we do here, man. We give you the NBA from a New York Knicks fan's point of view. Um, you know, we shoot the shit, as always. Drinks, laughter, combo, all that shit is on the house. Um, let's get into some Knicks stuff, man. Let's go. So, if you are a Knicks fan and you watch these games, I'm sure you know that we had a game against the LA Lakers last night. Late game, so I didn't get that video to you uh, earlier today. I did not uh, do a video after the game ended. Um, we played the Lakers, one of the top teams in the West in the league, period. And uh, we are the New York Knickerbockers, who are a win challenge team i'll put it that way i've said it in a bunch of different ways we aren't that good so the outcome as you could guess was a molly whopping a a demolishing a shellacking an old-fashioned ass whooping we lost uh 117 to 87 and the game was never close except at the beginning when they you know when they throw that shit up the, the the tip off at the very beginning of the game so what what happened to the Knicks you know the Lakers happened the game started off the Knicks came out with a little fire in their bellies they wanted to compete with the juggernaut the Lakers you know the David and Goliath type thing but as always the Lakers a good team stayed the course and the Knicks could not keep up that level of play for the game so when the Knicks settled down into the team that they normally are the Lakers being the team that they are kept on applying that pressure and we all know um pressure bus pipes so uh the Knicks was leaking everywhere, man. Um, we ended up, like I said, getting our asses kicked. Of course, LeBron James led the way for the Lakers with 31 points, five rebounds, and five assists. Uh, sometimes to me, it looked like the Knicks were in, in awe of him, letting him shoot and things of that nature. But I'm not going to get into my conspiracy theories. Um, they did have a, a scare with Anthony Davis. He did not play the whole game left early in the game when he took a weird spill um they took him out just for precautionary measures because you know the knicks are not a team that you're going to risk the health of one of your superstars to keep them in the game to try to get a win versus that team they are going to be fine without him and and of course they were um they let him stay out for the rest of the game and which is cool they they took an mri after the game and it showed that you know, negative didn't show any problems and what they diagnosed Anthony Davis with was a gluteus maximus contusion. Now, I'm not a doctor or a scientist, but I did look up gluteus maximus. And uh, so what that diagnosis is in layman's term pretty much is he bust his ass. It's like a scientific way. The gluteus maximus is your ass. And a contusion is a bru he bruised his ass. He bust his ass when he fell. So uh, good news for the Lakers fans. He will be back in the next game and he's taking a road trip with the team. So no harm, no foul. While we're on um, uh, less serious things. Let's get to my boy Bron's hair piece, man. Bron, fuck is going on with, with whatever this in the front you got going on here? What the fuck is that, bro? Um, In the beginning of the game, okay, so the Lakers blew the Knicks out. But, you know, LeBron, this shit took a loss. This shit got blowed out. Because it starts out in the beginning of the game. I don't know if it's Beijing or that that salt shit pepper shit that they shake on the top of whatever because in the beginning of the game it looked pretty good it looked solid it looked like he had a nice line and shit i was like okay so lebron went to the barber and got his shit you know looking good as the game goes and he starts to running and sweating and shit starts to kind of get to looking funny um like i think it, lo it looks sort of like what's in golf when they hit the ball in golf and that shit they they try to get it in the green which is nice and smooth and cool, but then sometimes that shit go off onto the side. You know, when the golfers get mad, they hit it to the side. It looked like that shit. I think it's called the roughage, the rough. It looked like that. It looks almost as if he may have transplanted some hair from somewhere down there and then put it up there. Like, um, LeBron, man, you are a millionaire. So you should have the million dollar hair piece joint uh transplant whatever they you know operation whatever they call that but you look like you got the thousand there version or maybe even the hundred air 
I know some niggas in the hood that got a better hair piece than, than that shit that he got going on up there. So, LeBron, get that shit fixed because your hairline and, and all that shit up there is definitely about 0 and 500, man. That, that shit, they got no victories on the season. And I want to see you doing better than that because I love your brother. And, you know, let's get that, let's get that taken care of. On the Knicks side of things, you know, in this game, since we got our asses whooped, there wasn't a lot of positive to say about the Knicks. But we did get Elfrey Payton back, and he put in a solid performance at uh, 12 points, 8 rebounds, and 4 assists, filled up the stat sheet for us with the same, you know, tough, tenacious play that he brings every single game. Congrats to him on the birth of his new child. And, you know, he came back and played, you know, with a fervor that showed he was away from the game. He probably missed the game, wanted to get back, got back to us, and gave us that. Uh, Julius Randle finished the game with 15 points and 10 rebounds. You know, not a great game for him, but the numbers are, you know, okay, nonetheless. So, um, that pretty much rounds up the positives, I guess, for the Knicks in the game where they got their asses handed to them. So, you know, it's what it is. All right, let's get to the hot and not segment. And, uh, I don't know if you watched the game. You probably noticed that I did leave out somebody when I spoke about the, you know, the, the not the bright spots, but the areas that the Knicks did have a little success in the game against the Lakers. One that I left out was today's hot player of the game. And who is it? Once again, none other than the Rook, R.J. Barrett, coming in uh, two times in a row uh, now, I think. Um, he's just been doing his thing, man. He had 19 points. Five rebounds. He shot about 48% from the field. He was one miss away from shooting 50% from the field, which is pretty damn good. Um, you know, he's been consistent lately, and I just think he, he deserves some props for that. Uh, it's hard being a rookie, a new player, going through the season. You go through your ups and downs, especially, again, I always talk about this. He's been winning throughout his career in basketball so far, so this has to be something brand new for him. And the way that he just, you know, he puts his big boy pants on, picks up his lunch pail, and heads in to work for the New York Knickerbockers, our New York Knickerbockers every day, kind of warms my heart and makes me want that dude to do better and wish nothing but the best and more success to him. I think that if he keeps attacking the game with the tenacity that he seems to attack each game, this is going to be the, the floor for this guy. And, you know, these times will be the worst times in his career. And he's doing pretty well now. So I just think I see nothing but good things for this guy if he keeps on doing what he's doing. But you had R.J. Barrett with the hot player of the game. At the not player of the game is another one of my faves. And, you know, the same way you give people their accolades when they do well, you got to call them the task when they not doing what they're supposed to do. And this not player of the game goes to Julius Randle, you know. Um, I did say he had 15 points and 10 rebounds, which is decent stats by some people's measurement stick, by their yardstick, but not by Julius Randle's, where he averages about 18, 19 points and around 10 rebounds a game. He had been on the tear, if you've listened to any of my previous videos, where for the last five games or so, he'd been averaging 28, 29 points a game and 10 rebounds. So um, coming in with 15 points is not very impressive and then taking 16 shots to get to 15 points i always say that if you have the same or more amount of shots then you have points then the game was not efficient at all and you did not do your job as a scorer you know if you're a person that's supposed to score the basketball you should not take 30 shots to get 30 points 20 shots to get 20 points that's not efficient at all and i'm sure with all those analytics that they do now i'm sure you come out terrible i think he was a negative 17 um on the plus minus uh if i'm not mistaken again you know i'm not the best with the numbers i do have them but then once i get to doing a little bit of this like i'm about to you know watch this sometimes they leave my mind but i think he was a negative 17 so, Julius, that is not acceptable. I think it was a little too much finesse in this game and not enough of the bull in the china shop. Um, it was like he was a bull in the china shop, but he was aware that he was in the china shop and he was trying to tiptoe around 
you know the different artifacts in Julius, just tear all that shit up. I need you to be in there bouncing off shit, knocking things over. This is what we need from you. This is what puts pressure on the other team, forces them to adjust their defense, and makes the game easier for everybody else in the Nick uniform. So, again, at the hot player of the game, Julius Randle, still my boy. You know, take care of that, and, and let's do better, man. All right, so now we're at the end which is the opposite of the beginning, and that's why they call it the end. And you guys know where we end these videos at. Always, forever, has been. It is mellow time. I don't know if that's something cool. Should I call it that, or should I just do my little spiel and then say it's with Carmelo Anthony? Well, you know, let me know in the comments below what you think. It's mellow time, man. Um, the Portland Trail Blazers, the, uh, the win challenge, just like the New York Knicks Portland Trail Blazers, are Portland, Port Nick, Trail Bockers. Uh, they played against the Toronto Raptors, who are doing pretty well this season, even without Kawhi Leonard, because they had a system in place and they've been pretty decent on the East for years. Kept that system in place. Kawhi left. They got new players, new talent, retooled, and you know Pascal Siakam stepped up. They're still the same team, pretty much that they were. You know, a little. You can't be as good without Kawhi, but they're still pretty good. Um, they were up by double digits for most of the game. Portland was struggling. Dame Lillard was having a bad game throughout the first three stanzas. Carmelo Anthony was getting busy throughout the entire game, leading them in scoring from beginning of the game to the end of the game. Carmelo notched 28 points, uh, seven rebounds, shooting over 50% from the field and shooting over 60% from the three-point line and for you people that hate all the time and say he don't pass the ball he even notched one count him one assist so like i said they were down by double digits through most of the game even into the fourth quarter they were down by double digits this is when dame lillard heated up and you know kind of began bringing the team back knocking down threes from he was knocking down shots from out of state from the, they say people can shoot from the parking lot he was shooting from a whole nother arena. This guy was knocking down shots. Uh, they started to close in on the lead. Melo was consistent, knocking down shots throughout the game. And then Dame Lillard reeled in the Toronto Raptors. And then on the last play of the game, this is what happened. The Toronto bench, Ananobi will defend the inbounds. Lillard and CJ stack up at the foul line. Last year when we were here, Kevin, it was Kawhi Leonard that made the game winner. Anthony brings it in bounds. CJ will take it on the baseline. Defended by Hollis Jefferson. CJ holding, sweeps it low to the floor. Outside of Carmelo. Head down, 15 footer away. Got it! Carmelo Anthony drills it straight away from 16 feet out. Three and three ten seconds remaining in this baby. As you can see, Melo still has it and he delivered the killing blow. Same old Melo, different situation. All of the naysayers that said he didn't have it, he couldn't play anymore. It's the same thing. It's like riding a bike, and I don't think, I haven't ridden a bike in a long time, but I'm pretty sure that if I got on a bike, I would still know how to ride. So Melo still knows how to score, and big up to you, salute, Melo, stay Melo, Melo time. Um, you know, former Nick always will be considered a Nick by me, and I love to see when they do well. So props to you, Melo, and we're going to always make sure that, uh, your accolades, your good performances are highlighted on this channel. So, it seems like it's been so short, but we are at the end of the video. Thank you guys for hanging out with me today because you could have been anywhere else doing anything else, but you decided to spend some time with me, take some time and click on this video. Um, you know, because we can, many cannot. As always, the drinks, conversation, bronze headline is not, but... <laughs> Everything else is on the house. Um, I will see you guys next episode. As always, peace. Drink. I'm out of here.